What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real. We knew today was the day of trades, y'all. And you know what? It started off slow. Bruce Brown gets traded. Who cares other than Detroit Pistons fans? And I guess, um, actually, that trade's not that bad. Brooklyn gets, like, an elite defender onto the team, and they need a perimeter defense. But that trade don't mean nothing. That wasn't worthy of a video. We knew that it was going to happen. Uh, the clock struck noon, and we were waiting, twiddling our thumbs, tweeting at Shams and Woes, like, where is that trade we've been, we've been wanting? And it happened about... 10 minutes ago. Chris Paul was traded, man. If you do not know who I am, hi, I'm Kenny. I am probably the biggest Chris Paul fan on this platform. As you can see, sign Chris Paul right here, and there's a sign Chris Paul ball above me. I've been a big fan of Chris Paul since the days, like the days, like third and fourth, the MVP days and with the Hornets. So um, this is a trade for me. And look, we are not done coordinating outfits. He got traded to Phoenix. So I went down and found one of my Phoenix Suns shirts for today's video. If you do not know what's going on, Chris Paul and Abdul Nadar were traded for Kelly Oubre, uh, Ricky Rubio, Ty Jerome, Jalen LaQuay, 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 and a 2022 first round pick that is protected pretty heavily. And then each year the protection gets lighter, adding up to the 17th first round pick that OKC has over the next seven years. 17th. It's like a video game. That's what it looks like a KOT for a Q video, really. I may have to turn that into a challenge. A Sam Presti challenge. Just get as many first round picks as you can. Sam Presti just adding them on. Um, so be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you're new. Uh, I just make ramble videos and give my opinions about things. You may disagree, which is completely okay. Use that comment section, uh, debate it everything all right so Chris Paul is traded and I'm excited for him, his next journey man I was so happy with the revival of Chris Paul's um I guess value you know you gotta think about it trading away Russell Westbrook again and Chris Paul they got multiple first round picks because Chris Paul was looked to be a bad contract he's looked to be a guy coming off a, a couple injuries back-to-back -back seasons he was he was getting to that I don't want to say washed realm but people were starting to say that he was washed in the NBA realm and then he recoups it makes an all-star game for the first time in a few years all NBA team for the first time in a few years and OKC becomes one of the better teams in the league his value skyrocketed and of course Sam Presti you know looking at this team to be in a rebuilding team Team, trades Dennis to yesterday and gets back a package that maybe a lot of people didn't like. And then today, I think that the package they got for Chris Paul was damn good. It just is. It just is. When you think about what Chris Paul's value was last year, where you had to get first-round picks and him because he was looked at as a negative asset, and you trade him away and you get a future first-round pick, and you get a couple players that aren't bad. Ricky Rubio is still very good. You think about just a few years ago, he had his career year in Utah. Then he got to Phoenix and the team was better when he was on the floor. And then you get back Kelly Oubre. And this is not about to be a video about Kelly Oubre, but this is what his third team in his small NBA career. He seems like he might be going down that path of players that are good enough to, to play, but maybe not great enough to keep. You get what I'm saying? Similar to like Whoa, you remember Tobias Harris early in his career? Tobias Harris played for like five different teams in like six years. That's what it felt like. He was in Orlando. He was in Milwaukee. Now he's in Philly. He was in, in well, L.A. Like he's one of those players that's good, but you ain't got no attachment to him. And that's maybe what he uh, Kelly Uber is turning into. But, of course, he is still super young. So who really knows? You know, things can change. But I think this is a good package, bro. You could still put together a competent NBA team for the OKC fans to watch every single night while also – thinking about that tank and also developing the young guys nothing they've traded for over the last couple of days really hinders Shea Gilles Alexander's development it doesn't hinder Darius Garland's development or any of the other guys that they really love this is a good deal for them and for the Phoenix Suns again we all looking at things based on what we know today I've said it in the last video we were talking about Chris Paul potentially getting traded that like again Chris Paul is my favorite point guard of all time but I got to keep it a buck he did have his best season in a couple of years, but it was also a season with a shortened, uh, shortened outcome. You know, the first year he didn't come out with any injuries happened to be a season where it was cut off for seven months. Those are the type of things that Phoenix Suns fans have to think about that like, yes, you're already getting a guy that is stellar, one of the best at his craft, and he's going to come in and help mold your front, your, your locker room and mold your team into something it could be. But there might be a situation where he ends up getting injured, and it's just the, this the risk that you have to take. If the rumors are true about Devin Booker potentially wanting out, this is a trade that tells him, hey, we want to win with you. We do. And with the backcourt of Chris, a healthy Chris Paul and, and Devin Booker, they're one of the best backcourts in the league, undoubtedly. 
undoubtedly one of the best backcourts in the league. We're talking about Chris Paul, who has notoriously just been able to get his players, his big men, into all-star games, turn them into all-stars. David West, I love David West, but he had his best years when Chris Paul was his point guard. I love Tyson Chandler. He... Eh. Actually, that, that may be not true because he did win a championship with Dallas. But he had some of his best days when Chris Paul was his point guard. DeAndre Jordan was a top three center in the league. He made an all-NBA team when Chris Paul was his point guard. A guy that can't create. It was his catch lives play defense. And DeAndre Ayton is going to be able to be one of the more skilled big men that Chris Paul has played with, at least recently, other than Blake Griffin, of course. Like, DeAndre Ayton has the full package offensively. And now he has a point guard that's going to put it in the right spot. And Ricky, Ricky Rubio was doing that to an extent. But ain't no better than Chris Paul in getting his big man incorporated in the offense. We're talking about the Phoenix Suns, who were a team that blew a lot of games in the fourth quarter last season. And they're bringing in a guy that was one of the best fourth quarter players in the history of basketball last season. The match is there. And then when you think about what you gave up, we had already talked about how Kelly Oubre might have been the odd man out in, in Phoenix we had talked about, I mean, if you're giving up Ricky Rubio for Chris Paul, that's a W of a trade regardless. Ty Jerome was just a tall point guard that very rarely got minutes. Jalen LaCour was a two-way player who, who shows the ability to, like, jump out of the gym and be super fun. Maybe OKC fans can look at that and be like, hey, let's develop Jalen LaCour, LaCour, LaCour. And um, you gave up a first-round pick. You have to tell Devin Booker, you have to show DeAndre Aiden that you guys are serious. You didn't give up anything that were really, like – you should be taken aback by, you know? The team of Chris Paul, Devin Booker, Mikael Bridges, Cam Reddit, oh, Cam Johnson, and DeAndre Aiden's are starting five looks really good. And you still have, like, they, they gave up another point guard. I was so happy that they kept, they kept uh, Javon Carter. Uh, I do think Javon Carter can help and, uh, you know, get mentored by Chris Paul. I'm actually interested to hear what he has to say about this type of trade. And they still, I saw this report, and I think it was about Bobby Marks, who's like a cap expert. They would still, after this trade, have the ability to re-sign Aaron Baines and re-sign Dario Sarge and still have money left over for the mid-level exception. That's what he said. I ain't no expert about the cap, but that sounds like a W to me. So if you can somehow bring back Aaron Baines, who's one of the best backup bigs in the league last year, if you bring back Dario Sarge, who can turn into Delino Gallinari light off the bench, of course. You still have money to convince maybe a, a vet to come to the team to be a backup wing for y'all. This team is molding into something, and this is legitimately a team that will be in playoff contention. I mean, even before this trade, we were talking about if what we saw from the Phoenix Suns in the bubble was the real deal, and now you add on top of Chris Paul, they are about to get real. Phoenix Suns fans should be jumping out. Uh, oh, I have both sides at this current point should be super happy with the way things went. Now, I could see a world where we're four months into the season, and then Phoenix Suns fans aren't happy with the trade because maybe Chris Paul – hurts himself or something like that I'm, I'm gonna knock on wood we don't want that to happen of course but it is still a big possibility um there is no risk in this for OKC right we already knew everybody knew that he was going to get shipped out and I think that the package they got back fits all the needs that they wanted as a team at the end of the day it is a team that is stockpiling their picks and well they got another one ladies and gentlemen and they probably hoping that this pick doesn't convey until 2025 because by that point, it's only top eight protected and it ends up being a ninth overall pick. You got another lottery pick. You never really know. But the Western Conference is getting deeper. Like I was thinking about it. If we looked at the NBA standings, I just want to quickly look at this NBA standings. And I'm like rating backcourts. When we think about backcourts in the NBA on the Western Conference side. Um, the Lakers backcourt isn't better. The Clippers backcourt isn't better. The Denver Nuggets backcourt isn't better. As of right now, the Rockets backcourt is, is still better. But you know how things are going on in Houston right now. So that could definitely change. OKC's backcourt is not better because they just gave them up. Utah Jet, like, they might have, other than Steph and Clay, like, they might have the best backcourt in, in the Western Conference. Oh, oh, CJ and Dame is up there. It's up there. But even then, it might be. We're talking about two All-Star versus an All-Star and a, a borderline. Either way, this team is going to be super fun, and, and I'm ready to have my Valley uh, CP3 jersey. I'm, sl I'm lightly repping Valley boys as my Western Conference team because my boy CP plays for them. Suns fans, hopefully y'all welcome me with open arms. Again, as a secondary fan because it's my boy Chris Paul. Uh, let me know what you think about this trade in the comment section. Super, super exciting stuff, and hopefully this is just the beginning of crazy trades. Um, okay. I just saw another Shams tweet, and it says DeMar DeRozan's optic in. Okay, 
Because, I mean, DeVar DeRose, there was another name out there, but he's opted in, and you never really know what's going to turn into things. Um, thank you all so much for watching. Comment section is there. Leave a like. Subscribe if you are new. We're dropping videos for every single major trade, signing, whatever. Love y'all. Talk to you soon. I'm guessing because you know how things go.